A new rarity system is dropping to the bazaar this month. And while it sounds familiar to other auto battlers, there are some key differences that add plenty of strategic depth to the game. In the previous build for the bazaar, the items had a level system, going from 1 through to 30. Each time you leveled up an item, its stats would increase slightly throughout the game. As you progress through your run, the merchants would offer you slightly higher level items, which encouraged you to swap out as yours fell behind the curve, and each day you would get one chance at the end of the day to level up your items in exchange for gold in the upgrade event. In our last video covering the affix system, check it out, links below as always, we discussed what is happening to said upgrade system at the end of the day, and made mention to a rarity system replacing the other half of what the item level design used to do. Now we know very little of the rarity system exactly, but we can expand quite heavily based on what we know elsewhere and what we know from previous builds of the game, as well as a few comments that Raynad made. We know there will be common, uncommon and rare types of rarity. Common cards costing 1 gold, uncommon costing 2 gold, and rare cards costing 3 gold. Common cards will be the weakest, uncommon cards somewhat stronger, with rare cards being the most powerful in the game, the cards that you will be ending your run with. Each rarity will likely be denoted by card colour, that is how most games do rarity, and as a colourblind man myself I hope there is an alternative, or at least they could choose distinct colours, please no more white into blue into purple or vice versa. Blue and purple together are the bane of my existence in games. You have so many colours to choose from. Do not pick ones that look remotely similar to an impaired audience. Sorry, colourblind rant over. It's actually one thing I really appreciated the Valve devs did with Artifact. Each colour of the card also had a symbol which appeared if you turned on the colourblind mode so it didn't take away from the base game and Drashkel improved it and I'm ranting again. Okay, back to the rarity system. If this is a direct replacement of the level system, as it did kind of sound like based on what we can infer from Raynad's wording in the Q&A video, linked below, go watch, it's kind of a prerequisite to these last few videos, then we could consider common cards to be the level 1 to 10 cards from the previous system, uncommon cards to be level 11 to 20 cards, and rare to be 21 to 30. Personally, I wouldn't like the hard cutoff in rarities after hitting a certain day of your run. Levels were more granular, so it was easier to do this sort of a sporadic addition of levels, but I would like it to remain that way with rarity as well. So after we hit the new equivalent of level 11, we don't stop seeing common cards and only see uncommon cards. It'd be nice to start seeing one or two uncommon cards after level 8 in the new system or so, and stop seeing common cards maybe after level 13 or so, after we get a bit more chance to see some uncommons and maybe eventually go into some rares. I use the old system as a guideline here, as that is what we currently know, but if you're unfamiliar, then you can count in PvP matches, or days, as known in the bazaar. After day 4, we start to see uncommon items, and after day 7 or 8, maybe we stop seeing so many common ones. Another thing we can infer, based on Raynad's wording, and assuming it is more of a direct replacement for the level system, is that each card will have common, uncommon, and rare version, ensuring that all cards are viable at all stages of the game. This is a bit of a leap of logic on my part, and I understand if people have other opinions as to exactly what Raynab was inferring, but this is how I read the new system to be, and this will be important as we get into later on. For example, the Dragon Egg card will have a common, uncommon, and rare version of that card, each one likely gaining a big stat boost compared to its predecessor. As you progress through the game, you might end up with a really powerful build at day 4, already 3 wins and 0 losses. However, the bazaar is about building sand castles, plural. You have to divert, adapt, and pivot your build. This is part of the design philosophy to keep games interesting. Unlike other auto battlers, you aren't just sitting around waiting for that last unit to level up. In the bazaar, even if you are on a 3 win streak from the start with a powerful build based around a certain synergy or what other games call archetypes, the merchants will start selling you items of much higher rarity, and you will want to swap to these items if you hope to keep up. This also adds some unique design space. We could end up getting an event or merchant that sells higher rarity items early on for a much higher price. So instead of buying 3 or 4 items in a day, maybe you just buy this one item but it's from the next rarity up. 
Will there also be merchants later on that are looking to buy common items for certain reasons, or perhaps even sell common items that are already upgraded with an affix or something? It should also help with balance. There are effectively now three timings for each card that the balance team can tune. If the blueberry pie is a little too strong in the early game, they can nerf its common card without touching the uncommon or rare cards. A little like how MOBAs can target different levels of a skill or ability to nerf champions or heroes or whatever you're playing at certain stages of their game. Overall, this is similar to rarity in auto battlers like TFT, Dota Underlords, and Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Those games also work to keep the game fresh by introducing new units of higher rarity later on. But as we've discussed previously, the major difference lies in the reroll option. You can force pretty much any build you want in an auto battler, yet that reroll button doesn't exist in the bazaar. You take what is given to you, albeit being able to at least choose a merchant and guide your path, but you're not just blanket hoping on RNG to force something. The rarity system in these auto battlers is tried and tested though. It defines each stage of the game and lets you recognize at a glance how strong something or someone is. And as mentioned, it keeps the game fresh, albeit in a slightly different way to what we should have in the bazaar. It looks likely, as I've said, that the bazaar will not introduce new items at each rarity level. Bread will not only be a common item and pizza will not only be an uncommon item. There will be a common, uncommon, and rare version of each and every item. That might not sound like a huge change, but it really, really is. It, for me, is the second largest reason I believe we will have for avoiding stale or solved metas after not having the reroll option being the main one. So, we already know that you cannot force a build because there is no reroll like you have in other auto battlers. But on top of that, in auto battlers, the pool of cards at any point in time is pretty tiny. At the beginning of the game, maybe 10 at maximum, and you were shown at least three of these options to buy from. In the bazaar, all 100 cards from each class are part of the lowest rarity, as far as I'm aware. All 100 cards likely have a chance of appearing in your first day. It isn't just, oh, they got X card in their first pull, so they win because it beats these other nine options. There will surely be cards that lend themselves to the early game, yeah, but there will be no definitive easy pick from 10 options. Equally, in the late game, you won't all be vying for that one overpowered max star or max rarity card. It won't be the one who takes that wins all, because there are 100 cards for you to choose from in that late game. And based on what synergies you've already built, different cards will want to be slotted in for different things. And that's just for you. There are 6 total classes at launch, so make that 600 cards to choose from at any stage of the game. Take your auto battler and 10x the options you have for cards to buy. 10x the strategic choices, 10x your mythical strategic depth whatever you deem that to be and you start to see why the bazaar will have no matter. And that is before you start adding affixes. If you like net decking, you are in the wrong place I'm afraid. As the game has been developed, it has really innovated and created its own identity. Yes, there is rarity, but there is no card combining like you have in other auto battlers. Instead, there's an affix system. It doesn't take two or three of your things and make it one thing just better. It takes one of your things and gives you two or three ways of making it better, but different. You don't have to pick cards based on their archetype. Just because you've got the powerful rare Huntsman doesn't mean you need to run all Huntsman cards. Instead, you build up synergies based on the strategy you wish to employ. You find a rare model ship for Pygmalion? Well, it currently has a passive that gives you shielding when you use another item. Do you look to build around shields and speed, which is the new form of cooldown reduction coming? Or do you pick quick firing small items to trigger it all the time? Or do you upgrade your Atlatl so it fires more quickly, putting all of your money into that extra item so that it triggers it all the time again? Or do you look for another similar item that also has a on-use effect to cause a chain reaction every time you use another item? This will all depend on your current build, and based on which strategy you want to employ, you will pick certain merchants or events, which may or may not give you the card you need. Maybe they give you something you didn't consider, but may be worth pivoting into. To be the best bizarre player, you won't have learnt the best strategy. You will need to be the best strategist. And that is one of the many reasons I am loving the choices made by the developers and designers. Do not forget to like and subscribe for all things bizarre here on the channel. It has become a primary focus for me, so this is undoubtedly your best stop to get 
any and all bizarre news and information. I've been Gainsight Greg, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.